here to celebrate the life and work of Edward Adamson, who was born in 1911, who was a British artist, became the pioneer of art therapy and the therapeutic art studio, and also the creator of this amazing art collection called the Adamson Collection, which we are featuring in the festival. I'm David O'Flynn, I'm the chair of the Adamson Collection Trust and the festival director of the Edward Adamson Festival 2014. My name's John Mazels, I'm the uh, publisher of a magazine called Raw Vision, which is uh, it's the only international magazine about outsider art. Because of the conditions, because the people who do it work so naturally and compulsively, it's thought of as the purest form of art. You don't need to know anything, you just look at it and you can absorb the message. It's like one of those things that people are just... They want to know what's going on inside someone's head, so it just seems to be a real curiosity to people to find out more about the people that create the work and try and understand somehow, you know, what their mental states are, what they're experiencing, and I suppose looking at their artwork is one way of trying to kind of understand that. For me, one, one of the joys and powers of Edward is this um, is that he didn't tell people what to do and he didn't interpret. He enabled and he accepted and so for me there's, there's something very powerful in, in that encounter between human beings when, when acceptance is involved. He believed that the act, of exp the act of creating art, the gesture of creation, made you better, healed you psychologically. And what was mattered in an art session was to allow the person to express as freely as possible without any influence or guidance or praise or criticism. He loved the person, the creator's, the creator's story, but nothing else mattered. One theme of the festival is to celebrate and re-examine, revisit his position, his p philosophical position, because. Though it might sound simple to let people create freely, I think it's quite difficult to do, be in a room with someone who's probably so, quite psychotic, disturbed, and just let them do without wanting to say, but, 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 but. Uh, the artists that are in the Adamson collection, um, they're not making the work for any other reason than a very personal reason. Um, they were enjoying and uh, appreciating that space to create, the process of creation, um, and some peace and quiet away from very intense, difficult, sometimes competitive wards. He collected all the work that people made, and that is probably controversial now. You really probably wouldn't keep work people have made unless they asked you to. He ended up after 35 years with 100,000 pieces in the collection. And we now have about 5,500 of those still survive, which is the collection now. It's in three parts. One is about 2,500 paintings and drawings by about 180 people. The second part is another 2,500 drawings and a series of sculptures, particularly a series of 14 Stations of the Cross by a woman called Rolanda Polanska. So it's a, huge, a third of the collection is her work. And the other part is about 500 small objects, ceramics, works on flint, bone, ceramic and pottery. We've taken the 2,500 paintings by 180, paintings and drawings by 180 people. They're now temporarily at the Welcome, and the plan is to gift those to the Welcome Library. So um, I came to SLAM, South London and the Maudsley, had a tour of the collection, met David. A lot of the pictures were stored in a disused shower unit. I was very concerned that it would only take a, a split and a pipe or something and the whole load, it could all be ruined. Also, Edward used the cheapest materials possible, so post wallpaper, backing paper, poster paint. In the 1950s, early 1950s, the Canadian painter William Curelet came to London seeking psychiatric help and he came to the Maudsley first for treatment. And he was transferred in November 1953 to Nevin to work with Edward for about 15 months. And he produced a series of mental health masterpieces in terms of mental health terms in that period. Paintings like The Maze, I Spit on Life. We have five of those together at the Bethlehem Museum. And for the first time since they were painted over 50 years ago. 
alongside a series of ink drawings by Edward to show Edward as artist. So he has a very fine drawing line. Today is the opening day of the festival and, and we're, we're premiering a, the UK premiere of a, a movie about William Kirillek and his son um, Stephen is, is joining us later. Alongside some clips from um, a film about the Edmondson collection by Ed Lawrence and, and Pierre Borg which called Abandoned Good. So we're, since we rediscovered the collection and moved it to welcome, the outside art world are beginning to recognise this as a really important international collection of this thing called outside art. Every time I, I come to the collection or at the welcome or when, when it was at the hospital or, or here today, um, is um, I see something I've never seen before. So David is such an incredible force of nature and bringing um, all these ideas and all these possibilities together and this is a culmination of a lot, many years of his hard work and his passion. That's amazing, it's, it, yeah, that, that, that urge to be creative is so powerful for people. We will then be presented with the issue of what is the Edmondson Collection Trust without the Edmondson Collection. If we give them the collection away, what are we? So it's almost the next phase now has to happen, the, ne the next bit of the journey. Excellent.